Okay, we are ready for lesson 3.13, Fraction of Problems, Part 1. We're going to be able to solve problems that involve fraction of to build readiness to move towards multiplying fractions by whole numbers. Let's start off with our warm-up. We are to write the following numbers in standard notation. So our first one here, we have 3 times 10 to the third power. Then we have 5 times 10 to the second and 4 times 10 to the fifth. Take a second and write those out on a piece of paper or a slate, and then we will check our work together. All right, so for the first one, you can see that I wrote a 3, and then I wrote three zeros afterwards to get the number 3,000. For the next one, I'm going to write a 5, and then I see that I have a 2 uh, as an exponent, so I'm going to write 1, 2, zeros after that. <clears throat> Give me 500. And then finally, 4 times 10 to the 5th, so I'm going to write a 4, and then 5 zeros. 1, 2, 3, four, five zeros, and then we're going to put our comma there. So it's actually 400,000. The word represent is to show, symbolize, or stand for something. For example, numbers can be represented using the base 10 blocks. They can be represented with spoken word or writing numerals. So why don't you look around either your classroom or at home and can you find a place where these are represented um, or even out in the real world? Where are numbers represented? Let's start off with our math message, really getting into the fraction of. We can see that Ella has 22 baby carrots and I want to Get in the habit of continuing to do cubes. So we're going to circle 22 baby carrots. And her brother Jackson has 36 baby carrots. Ella eats half of her carrots and Jackson eats one third of his. Who ate more carrots? So we see that we are going to be doing a fraction of problem already. We're going to be doing one half of 22. So we're going to write that one. We're going to think about what is one half, sorry, of 22. And then Jackson had 36. And so we're going to write one third of 36. My writing is horrible today. I'm using a different computer. So a little different. So we've got our two fraction of problems, one half of 22 and one third of 36. So going through our thought process here, one half of means one out of two equal parts. One third of means one out of three equal parts. These types of problems are called fraction of problems. Okay. So when we look back at this, we could figure out, well, what is one half of 22? That is 11. And then one third of 36, well, we could divide 36 into three parts. 36 divided by three. And what would you get? So one half of 22 would be 11 carats. And one third of 36 would be 12 carats. So even though his fraction is smaller, his whole number is bigger, and he ate more carrots, actually. Jackson ate 12, Ella ate 11. So on page 105 is where we're just going to get into the fraction of problems. And so if you could turn to 105, I'm going to do this first one as an example, then we'll do another one, and then you'll do the last one on your own. So there are 56 beads on a necklace, 56 beads on a necklace here. 
one fourth of the beads are blue. How many beads are blue? So we're going to rewrite this as one fourth of 56. Okay. So we're thinking of one fourth. That's one out of every four. So we're dividing it into four groups. So your thought can be, okay, I'm going to take 56 beads and I'm going to divide them into groups of four. And I know that one out of every four of those is blue. So 56 divided by four, we're going to figure that out thinking about our math facts. I know four times 10 is 40. And so then four times 11 is 44. Four times 12 is 48. Four times 13 would be 52. And then four times 14 would be 56. So I know 14. Whoa. Okay. That's a four. My goodness. All right. <laughs> So 14, so one fourth of 56. So one group of four is equal to 14. And so how many beads are blue? Only 14, because we could have 14, 14, 14, and then another group of 14. And so I know that this is the one group we're talking about. One out of four groups would be 14. But let's just check to see if that is what the book also said, just to double check our work here. And they did the same thing. The, you can see that their thought process was to first divide it into groups of four. So we can see that group of 10. And then they knew what would be left and so they added those they added one more to each and they saw 14 they did the same thing just in a different way and remember that's okay we can show our thinking in different ways we don't have to be identical okay like i said we're going to do one more together um this one says jenna was or has 45 yards of yarn she uses one fifth of it for a knitting project, how much yarn did she use? So we've got 45, we've got the one fifth, I'm gonna do it over here, one fifth of, and you can even see that word of right there to help us, one fifth of 45, okay? So for this, I'm gonna remember that I'm dividing it into how many groups? Five. So I'm going to take 45 and I'm going to divide it into five groups. And I know 45 divided by five is nine. So that just reassures me that one group of 45, and you've got five groups, is nine. And we can remind ourselves by doing one two, three, four, five, and each one of those would be worth nine. And we would get a total of 45. You could even do, <clears throat> for this one, a number line. And you might go from zero to 45 and dividing that into five equal groups. So we might do of course we might do this You might do it like this. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. Obviously, you'd want this to be a little bit more even. And each one would equal nine. Okay, so you can see they did that. They they did the number line instead of the circles.